from stories around the world to stories here at home. This is the National News Broadcast. A pleasant evening. I'm Dilanjali Ananda. Good evening. I'm Clifford Richards. First of all, we take a look at the headlines. Dinesh Priyanka sets a world record at the Paralympic Games. The number of cured COVID-19 patients has increased to 372,000. 730,000 families have already been provided the 2,000 rupee allowance. The government expenditure on the COVID immunization program exceeds 24 billion rupees. 2,187 metric tons of sugar found at the port's authority premises have been directed to the Satosa. Moving on to the stories in detail. Dinesh Priyanta has been successful in winning the first gold medal for Sri Lanka in the history of the Paralympic tournament today. He has established this unique event by setting a new world record as well. President Gotabe Rajapaksha, Prime Minister Mahindra Rajapaksha and Sports Minister Namal Rajapaksha have extended their best wishes to Dinesh Priyanta. <laughs> Dinesh Priyanta joined the Sri Lanka Army in 2004 and was assigned to the Gajabar Regiment. Dinesh became a disabled as a result of being subjected to terrorist attack in Kilnochi on the 16th of December 2008. He has been engaged in para-athletic sports since the year 2012. Since then, he has been able to win many medals in the Sri Lanka Army para-athletic meets and also the international national para-athletic meets. Dinesh Priyanta won the silver medal at the World Para-Athletic Championship Tournament in 2016. At the Rio Para-Olympic Games in the same year, he won a bronze medal. It was Pradeep Sanjay who had brought Sri Lanka's first Paralympic medal to the country in the year 2012. The Minister of Sports and the Higher Technology Committee in joint collaboration had named a 60-member reserve of competitors with the objective of bringing international-level medals to Sri Lanka. Dinesh Priyanta was also included in the reserve. Our Medal Hopes feature has introduced to the country information and expectations of players in the reserve. Dinesh Priyanta has turned his expectations into reality due to his unflinching efforts and undaunted determination. Dinesh Priyanta was born in Pahayala village in Kagama in Ipurogama Divisional Secretary Division in the Anuradhapura district. He had lost his father at the age of 12. Priyanta is a father of three children. President Gotabe Rajapaksha has congratulated Dinesh on his victory by placing a note on the Twitter account. The president had stated that Dinesh, who had once dedicated himself to safeguard the country from tiger terrorists, had recorded a significant victory on behalf of the country today. Prime Minister Mahindra Rajapaksha has also extended congratulations to Dinesh. The Prime Minister in his message he has stated that Dinesh Priyanta, who had unfailingly fulfilled his obligations in the fight to unite the country against separatism, had brought a bronze medal to the country at the Rio Olympic Games. He added that he has been successful today to record Sri Lanka's first Paralympic gold medal. Opposition leader Sajid Premadas has also congratulated Dinesh. In his Twitter message, the opposition leader has stated that Dinesh is a source of pride to Sri Lanka. Sports Minister Namal Rajapaksha in his Twitter message had also extended his wishes to Dinesh Priyanta. He added that his victory today should be regarded as the most exceptional victory by a Sri Lankan competitor in the recent history. The minister also said that all Sri Lankans should be proud of Dinesh's victory. 
Well, best wishes were extended in this manner through contacts with uh, the trainer Dinesh Priyanta by the sports minister following the victory of Dinesh Priyanta. Minister Nama Rajapaksha said that he wishes to extend his wishes to Dinesh Priyanta, who has secured the highest victory without looking for excuses for shortcomings. Gold medalist Dinesh Priyanta said that he was engaged in residential training at the sports ministry for a period of around one year. He added that the sports minister allowed them the opportunity to undergo training amidst the COVID pandemic. He further said that the wish of his coach Pradeep Nishanta was to win a goal for the country. Army Commander General Shavindra Silva says that Dinesh Priyanta Herath has been promoted to the rank 1 from the existing position of sergeant. The Army Commander further says that the promotion has been granted on the approval of the President and the Secretary of Defence. Sri Lanka Rupani Corporation also extends its warmest wishes to Dinesh Priyanta, who has secured Sri Lanka's first ever Paralympic gold medal. Meanwhile, Samit Dulan Kudituaku has won the second medal to Sri Lanka at the Tokyo Paralympic Games today. He has secured the bronze medal in the F-64 javelin throw event. Let me take a quick check on the local COVID-19 situation. The number of persons fully cured by the COVID-19 disease has been increased to 371,992. The epidemiology unit says that a further 14,394 fully cured patients have been added to the database today. Well, accordingly, the number of COVID-19 patients fully recovered today was at 2,180. Specialist Physician Hemant Herat said that a correction has been made in the numbers of COVID patients and cured patients. This was due to not being able to receive results of antigen tests easily, as in the case of PCR test results. There is no concealing of the number of cases, he says. There is accurate information on daily discharges from hospitals and there is also methodology to detect the number of patients undergoing treatment in residences. Sometimes it is not possible to receive information on a daily basis, he says. Make <laughs> Three thousand five hundred and eighty eight COVID nineteen patients were detected from the country today. Meanwhile, two thousand one hundred and eighty left hospitals today following recovery. The methodology to treat COVID infected persons in their homes themselves is being successfully conducted continuously. A corona-infected pregnant woman admitted to the Badul Hospital was reported to have given birth to a baby after a cesarean surgery. However, it has been found that uh, the baby was also infected with the virus. Both the mother and the infant have arrived at the Demodera residence last night. The COVID Intermediate Treatment Centre established for the treatment of bhikkhus affected with the virus was declared open at the International Vipassana Meditation Centre at Vijirav Mawat Colombo. Today, 84 bhikkhus were able to be treated at once at the centre. A COVID intermediate treatment center set up at the Meethotamulla Paddy Storage Complex was also declared open today. The center was able to accommodate 700 patients at once. A face mask made out of 21 local herbal ingredients was introduced to the State Minister Specialist Physician Dr. Sudarshani Fernandapulli today. It was designed by Deshabandhu Saman Hetyarachi. The mask has received a quality certificate from the Sri Lanka Industrial Technology Institute.
A further batch of 124,000 doses of US manufactured Pfizer vaccines were brought to the island today. COVID immunization vaccination program have been successfully conducted throughout the island today as well. Programs to inoculate persons above the age of 60 and persons with special needs are being conducted continuously. Mobile vaccination programs were engaged in operations in the districts of Colombo, Kalutara Kurunagala Kandy, Badulla Muragala Gol, Mathara Hambantota Polanaru Jaffna, Bavunia Kilinochi Manna, Trinkamali and Batiklo. The Sri Lanka Army has extended assistance to a program to inoculate persons above the age of 60 years in Bavunia, Puntotama and Maharambukulama and Kartaninskulam today. Minister Chamal Rajapaksha says that uh, the 2,000 rupee allowance provided by the government for the people who have been deprived of their livelihood due to the quarantine curfew has been distributed among nearly 730,000 families. The minister has ordered the relevant officials to further expedite the process of uh, handing over the 2,000 rupee allowance to the needy people. Minister Chamal Rajapaksha and the Secretary to the Ministry of Home Affairs, M. Chitranand, they have inspected the progress on the provision of the 2,000 rupee allowance to those whose livelihood has been affected over the Zoom technology today. Instructions have been given to the District Secretaries and Divisional Secretaries to speedily hand over the allowance to all relevant families. The Minister and the Minister Secretary have appreciated the services provided by the officials of the District Secretariats and Divisional Secretariat Division Officers confronting the COVID-19 pandemic. 1.8 million families have been identified to be eligible to receive the allowance. All relevant families are being paid the allowance through District Secretariats and the Divisional Secretariat Division Officers. State Minister of Finance Ajit Nivad Kabra says that the amount of money the government has spent so far to provide the COVID immunization vaccine to the people in the country exceeds 24 billion rupees. Addressing a media briefing in Colombo today, he further said that the vaccination program is being carried out successfully. The State Minister added that therefore the people who are engaged in self-employment and daily paid work should be allowed to engage in their duties subjected to health guidelines. State Minister Ajit Nivad Kabra said that as a result of daily, deadly COVID pandemic, many businesses in many locations have to stand still. There is some fairness in closing down such businesses. But the State Minister has pointed out that we must realize many people rely on daily wages for their day-to-day -day living. Therefore, special attention should be focused on such people. State Minister Kabra added that therefore his opinion is that those engaged in self-employment and daily work basis should be given permission to engage in their duties according to health instructions. If not, these workers will have to face a massive problem. The State Minister further said that lockdowns also causes a severe loss to the economy. This brings an un irreparable damage to the gross domestic production. Although people are holding different views on this issue, none of them appears to be having any feelings on the situation. However, the government is acting with a sense of failing. He has also expressed optimism to overcome the challenge. The State Minister further said that it is essential to open up the country. However, it should be done according to guidelines provided by the health sector. The State Minister also said that the opposition is trying to retain the country under a lockdown and to further aggravate the problems. Their aim is to drag the country to an ungovernable situation. The State Minister has further point out, out that if the position was really cared, has really cared for the society, they should have been able to stop protests conducted in 800 locations. But they did not do anything to stop such agitations. State Minister Cabral has also stated that despite all difficulties, the government has already spent around 120 million US dollars to import vaccines to the country. He added that government will do everything possible to allow the people to get along with their daily routine, but added that the people should be given the opportunity to engage in their income earning procedures. Deputy Postmaster General Tusita Hulangamo says that temporarily suspended adult allowances will be paid through post offices. He further says that all payments will be made upon receiving approval from the Health Divisions and the Covid Control Task Force. 
Deputy Postmaster General Tusita Hulangamua said that the post offices were compelled to close due to the rapid spread of the COVID-19 disease. At the time of closure, they were in the process of issuing a partial basis, the adult allowances. He added that the post office has enough funds to pay back the remaining allowances. However, they need to obtain the permission on the reopening of the post offices from the Director General of Health Services. If it is not possible to bring the elderly persons in a secured manner to the offices, the payments could be handed over to the relevant persons at their residences. He added that they are waiting the receipt of permission within the next two to three days. Minister Rohit Abegunavadana says that measures have been taken to hand over to the Lanka Satasa 2,187 metric tons of sugar held within the port's authority without payment of delayed charges. The Consumer Affairs Authority was able to raid 4,096 metric tons of imported sugar stored in an unregistered warehouse today. Minister Rohit Abegunavadana said that 81 containers have brought 2,187 metric tons of sugar to the port's authority. Arrangements have been made after talks with the Minister of Trade to hand over the entire stocks to the Satasa for 104 rupees per kilo. The program would enable to sell sugar at a lower price to the consumer despite the incurring of losses by the Ports Authority. The stock was detected in a raid conducted by the authority in Keravala Piti of Vaktala. An order has been given to release the 4,096 metric tons of sugar hidden in the short storage. Well, the release of sugar stocks from the Sevenagala Sugar Factory to the Satosa and cooperatives has commenced today with the objective of providing kilogram of sugar to the consumers for 130 rupees. Chairman of the Lanka Sugar Company, Janaka Nimal Chandra, says that the adequate stocks are being released from the Sevenagala and Palavatta factories. The Lanka Sugar Company says it is conducting talks with the Cane Research Institute with the objective of producing new varieties of cane which could double the harvest. A program has been commenced to provide free of charge local Ayurvedic medicine for families undergoing quarantine for COVID-19 disease. These patients are those who have received Ayurvedic treatment from the Department of Ayurveda in the Western Province. Community health medical officers are engaged in treatment of patients at 40 divisional secretariat divisions in the Western Province. Health officials say they are in constant attention on the well-being of patients recovering from the disease. Well, Foreign Minister Professor J.L. Perry says that the government has fulfilled a significant amount of work for the development in every field in the country amidst the COVID-19 pandemic. He made these remarks addressing a media briefing of the Sri Lanka Podujana Peramuna in Colombo today. Minister Professor Jewel Perry said that the Sri Lanka is a country which maintains cordial relations with the world. They are not surprised by the annual practice of launching attacks against Sri Lanka in Geneva City. He added that there is a question whether this is a fair practice. He added that they are not aware why Sri Lanka is being continuously chased in this manner. He invited friendly countries to extend support to Sri Lanka during this crucial period of the COVID pandemic. People throughout the island are engaged in cultivations utilizing organic fertilizer even under the existing COVID-19 pandemic. They say that the government's decision to rely solely on the application of organic manure has been a source of strength to them. This is an organic farm being successfully maintained for a period of nine years in Got Gotuvala in Demodera in the Badala district. W. Chandrika Jasinghar of Mahindagama village in Asalapura in the Pulonaro district is conducting a successful farm using only organic fertilizer. Well, the Ministry of Foreign Relations says that Sri Lanka hopes that all people holding travel authorizations from other countries would be allowed to travel in and out of Afghanistan in a safe and orderly manner.
The Minister of External Affairs said in a statement that it is closely monitoring developments in Afghanistan and is concerned about the situation, including its humanitarian aspect. The Foreign Ministry has further indicated that Sri Lanka hopes that all those who possess travel authorization from other countries will be allowed to proceed in a safe and orderly manner to the points of departure and travel out of Afghanistan. Sri Lanka, with the help of its international partners, is helping to evacuate its citizens from the Afghanistan territory. As of today, 66 Sri Lankans have been evacuated and seven more are yet to be evacuated, while 21 Sri Lankans have opted to stay in Afghanistan for the time being, the statement further said. Lots of cricketing action to look forward to. With that, we end the news. Do enjoy the rest of the programs. Take care and good night. Good night. Stay safe.